This is the video introduction to experiment 5, vitamin C determination by redox back titration. Before we start, we're going to have to define some new terms that you haven't gotten to yet in lecture that are going to help you understand what's going on in this experiment. And the first of these is a redox titration. This is a titration where the equivalence point, the chemistry that's going on, uh, depends on a redox reaction, not acid base like in experiment 3 or a complex formation like in experiment 4. In those two experiments, we used an indicator, and for a redox titration, you can also use an indicator, uh, but here, there's also the potential to use this, um, use the current that's produced by this redox reaction to monitor for the endpoint potentiometrically. We are going to use a redox indicator in this case, but there's another way that you could do it. Your textbook deals with this topic of redox titrations in chapter 15, and so you can read there for more background. I mentioned on the title slide that this is a back titration. And a back titration is not the kind of titration that we did in experiment 3 and 4. The calculation of um, the analyte concentration at the very end is going to involve one extra step. And we'll talk about that when we get there. But in general, for a back titration, you start with your analyte in solution in your titration flask. And you add to that an excess of a standard reagent. The reagent and the analyte react with each other. And since you added an excess of the standard, some is left over. You titrate away that amount that's left over, and so you can find, based on how much you added and how much is left behind, the difference is how much reacted with the analyte. Uh, there's a brief discussion of this in section 1.5 of your book. Finally, this is an iodometric titration, and the reason that it's an iodometric titration is because the, uh, you start out with the production of iodine in solution, I2. Um, and then you titrate away that I2 with sodium thiosulfate. Um, that is the indicator in this case. Uh, the I2 molecule is yellow when it's, it, actually the I3 molecule is yellow when it's in solution. Uh, and when it's complex to starch, you get a very nice deep blue color. And so we're going to use both of those colors, yellow and blue, to see the endpoint of this reaction. Um, Using iodine as an indicator in general and titrations involving iodine are discussed in chapter 15, section 7. So for the specific experiment, the goal that we're going to have is to determine how much vitamin C is in a commercial vitamin C tablet. The method we're going to use is an iodometric titration, a back titration, um, using sodium thiosulfate as the titrant. So there are three reactions of interest. The first one there you see there's uh, I minus and IO3 minus, so iodide and iodate ions reacting in solution to make I3 minus, the triiodide ion. That I3 minus ion in the standardization reaction is just titrated away with sodium thiosulfate. In the actual vitamin C analysis, you first react some of that I3 minus with vitamin C, ascorbic acid, and then titrate away the excess. Uh, so the indicator is going to be the absence of that triiodide ion. So the solution is going to go from a deep brown uh, to yellow, then you'll add some starch and it'll turn blue, and then it will become colorless at the end point. In your procedure, it says that you're going to weigh out your sodium thiosulfate using a top-loading pan balance and everything else using your analytical balance. We're not going to do that. We're going to weigh out everything on your analytical balance for this experiment. So when you come in, there will be three desiccators in the balance room. One is going to have sodium thiosulfate in it, one is going to have potassium iodide, and one will have sodium carbonate. There's going to be four sets of these three desiccators, so you'll have one relatively close to your balance. For the sodium thiosulfate, your procedure says to weigh it directly into an amber glass bottle, but you're not going to do that. You're going to use a weigh boat, one of the big weigh boats, and these will be on the counter, and weigh out your approximately 8.7 grams. You notice that the sodium thiosulfate is in big chunks. And so if you can't get exactly 8.7, don't worry about it. Get as close as you can. You're going to standardize the titrant, so it doesn't necessarily matter. Okay, uh, you're also going to dissolve your KiO3 in a little bit of water, your potassium iodate, in a little bit of water, and then add this to a 500 milliliter volumetric flask. The potassium iodate is going to be not in one of those desiccators in the balance room. It's going to be in your weigh bottle. So remember, and I'll point this out when you get there, KiO3, potassium iodate, is in the weigh bottle you left at the end of the previous experiment. Potassium iodide, Ki, is in a desiccator in the balance room. Once you make your potassium iodate solution in the 500 milliliter volumetric flask, 
you're going to pipette 50 milliliters of it into each of your titration flasks. And so if you remember that reaction of interest, it had KiO3 as a reactant and Ki or I- as a reactant. So in the flask, you're going to pipette the uh, potassium iodate solution. Then you're going to go to the balance room and weigh into a weigh boat about 2 grams of potassium iodide, Ki. And then you're going to add that to the titration flask as well. Wait, stir it until everything's dissolved, and at that point you'll have a colorless solution. In, also in that reaction of interest, there was a large number of protons. And when you add that large number of protons, that's what makes the reaction go and produce I3-, minus, which is, again, our indicator and what we're going to be titrating away. So to add those, you're going to uh, pour with a graduated cylinder some concentrated sulfuric acid. Uh, highly concentrated, not the, the very most concentrated stuff. And when you do that, your solution will turn this brown color due to the triiodide ion. And at this point, you should immediately begin to titrate with sodium thiosulfate. So you don't want to prepare all your flasks in advance. You can prepare them right up until the point where you add the acid, but then you, once you add the acid, you need to titrate immediately. About halfway through the titration, it'll look like this. It's turned from this dark brown to maybe an amber color. If you add the starch now, uh, you will have a problem. This is way too early to add the starch. As you keep going, the amber will fade to a lighter yellow color, and this is sort of the darkest yellow where you would want to add the starch. You need to be really careful, though, not to wait for it to become too faint, because once the yellow color is gone, the triiodide is gone, and the starch won't do anything. The starch is acting sort of like a magnifying glass for our endpoint, just helping us notice a smaller change in I3- minus concentration. So when you add the starch, you get this deep blue color. Uh, and when you add it, you should go drop by drop, or slower, half drop by half drop, until you get to the end point, because the fact that you've added the starch should mean that you're very close. At the end of the titration, the starch does not look pretty. All right, uh, it's, it's still, there's still a cloudiness in the solution. The important thing is that the blue color, the triiodide uh, complex to the starch, is gone. This picture was taken during uh, the determination of the vitamin C in a vitamin C tablet, and the tablet has some colored dye in it. So it makes it, again, it looks kind of nasty when you get to the end point. The important thing is that the blue color from the starch iodine complex is gone. So you'll do your standardization and you'll do your unknown determination, and now we get to data analysis. For the standardization, this is a straightforward titration calculation. Calculate the number of moles of iodate ion that you pipetted into the titration flask. Use the balanced chemical equation to figure out the moles of sodium thiosulfate delivered with the burette, and then use the volume uh, delivered to find the molarity that you delivered with, of the titrate that you delivered with the burette. So now you have your titrate molarity and you're ready to do your unknown determination. For your unknown determination, you're still pipetting your KiO3 into the titration flask, and so you're going to start your calculation in the same place. How many moles of the iodate ion did you add to the flask? Calculate the number of moles of sodium thiosulfate delivered with the burette. This tells you how many moles of iodate were in, or iodide really, were in the flask when you started the titration. The difference between those two numbers is because you're going to pipette a solution of vitamin C into the flask from your unknown tablet. So the difference between the number of moles that you originally added with the 50 mil pipette and the number of moles that you titrated away with the thiosulfate titrant is the number of moles that reacted with vitamin C. So you have moles of iodate that reacted with vitamin C, and then you can use a balanced chemical equation to find the moles of vitamin C that did that reacting. Your final step is going to be to use your molar mass to find the number of grams or milligrams of vitamin C that were in the tablet, the entire tablet, not just the amount that you pipetted into the titration flask.